All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for showing up today. I'm super excited to have Vicki Roberts here on our three and four star diamond mastermind call. Vicki, they know about you. Well, at least I've advertised who you are a little bit. So of course I want to ask you more of who you are, tell a little bit about your story, but I want you to know these are all my amazing three and four star diamonds who are, have big goals by summit, um, have big goals by the end of the year. And so we are just excited to invite you into our little realm and our little party of three and four star diamonds. So please, why don't you go ahead and take it away with, first of all, who you are, who's Vicky, and then also I know you're going to talk to us about a lot of golden nuggets. So I'm just going to turn the time over to you, my dear. Okay. So my name is Vicki Roberts. I'm from Seattle, Washington. So uh, you guys are talking about how it's cold. I feel you, but it's not that cold here. Um, but I've been a coach for six years. I walked away from corporate America two and a half years into coaching. Um, and I've been full-time coach ever since. I have an eight-year-old son. I'm getting married in July. Uh, I've lost 130 pounds thanks to Beachbody. Um, I'm founder of Unstoppable Misfits, which are my hand-picked family, as a lot of you guys know that you pick, you pick your family, you pick your teams. Um, and I am working with my team. We are going, we are going, because I'm putting that out in the universe, we are going to be 10 star by Summit. You hear that, Brett? You hear that? Just letting you know. If you don't know, now you know. Um, but so I, I've been, I've, I've, I'm going to talk to you guys about some pointers and stuff that Brittany has asked me to touch on, but I've always been, there is no plan B kind of coach, whether I, I came into this business and honestly, I signed up with a turbo fire challenge pack when it was still $205. And that was crazy expensive to me. I don't know how many of you guys are moms, but as a mom, ever since I became a mom, it's been hard to spend $20 on myself, let alone $200 on myself. And at that time, we weren't even making ends meet. Like there was times where we had to choose between groceries and diapers for the week. And so making that investment in myself was something I really struggled with, something I really felt guilty about, but something that I knew I needed to do because I needed a change. I was overweight. I was unhealthy. I had no self-esteem. We were struggling in every aspect of our life. Um, and I was scared because I had, I had no belief in myself. I didn't know if I was going to be able to lose weight. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get anyone to join me. Who was going to want to join someone that was still well over their, their goal or a healthy weight. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do with Beachbody. And, um, but I've all ever since it was, I didn't work my business for the first 30 days because I was scared. And when I did my 30 day progress pictures with turbo fire. I put them on social media after like convincing myself and probably vomiting in my mouth and, you know, crying a little bit. Um, I put it out there and the feedback that I got from everybody was amazing. And people came to me and were saying how inspiring I was, how I inspired them to start working out and all this stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is my calling. Like, this is what I'm meant to do. Ever since then I've worked my business. Like there's no plan B. Like it's been survival mentality. Not that I've ever pushed or convinced like Brittany knows I've never been that pushy salesman. I've never, I mean, <clears throat> six years ago, my time hop will hop up and be like, you did this post. And I'm like, Oh my God, Shanti was all up on my feed. And Shalee Johnson was all like, it was no me. It was all them, but I've never pushed someone to sign up. I've never convinced someone to sign up. I've always had that survival mentality. Like I put my business first. I make it a priority but I, I do it in a loving way and I do it with all my heart to where I am able to talk to coaches and our prospects and get them to coach despite what objections they fly, you know, that fly out or despite the fears, you know, it's all about, and I've learned this in our mastermind groups, it's all about breathing belief in to your prospects, to your coaches, to your customers. Because, you know, if you think back on when you first started your journey and did you have, like, did you believe in yourself 150%? Chances are, no, you didn't. And you needed someone that you can count on. And I think that's what we do as coaches is we are that someone for someone. We are that person that people could count on that, you know, whether they need a vent to or come to or get motivation or get a swift kick in the ass even. And so that's, that's what I've always been. And um, like, like I said, at the beginning, when I introduced myself, I, my 
my team is called Unstoppable Misfits. And the word unstoppable is so huge for me because I used to use, oh my God, I have a puppy German Shepherd and she is, she's like a toddler. I'm not even kidding. So I'm sorry if you guys hear her throwing stuff around or chewing stuff. But um, I am really big into like the miracle morning routine. I'm sorry, I'm going like all over the place here. But um, one of my morning routines is I write daily affirmations. Is And one of the affirmations I used to write all the time is I am strong. Well, I'm a huge Brene Brown advocate and I'm a huge personal development advocate. And when I started reading about Brene Brown and even Andrea Owen, she wrote um, How to Stop Feeling Like Shit. I read that recently and I realized when people say I'm strong, they're trying to kind of like, yeah, I love Andrea Owen too, but they're trying to like man up. Like I am strong. I'm tough. I could conquer anything. Nothing's going to define me. I could, you know, do all this stuff. And the more I thought about strength, like the word strong is I'm, I don't, I can't be vulnerable. And to me, unstoppable is you can prevail. You can be great despite the weak points in your life, despite, despite what life throws at you, despite the objections or the excuses that you hold yourself back with. Um, and so I, I've bled that into my team about how to be unstoppable because I have a lot of coaches that struggle with depression or anxiety or, um, divorce or abusive relationships or things like that, that, you know, we're all going to get life thrown at us. And I think the more that we realize like we can prevail and we can overcome what the universe or what life throws at us, we are unstoppable and we can be unstoppable. And showing that through your posts on social media and how you talk to people and stuff, it's like a trickle down effect, you know, like you're paying it forward despite with they show up or if they show up as a coach or a challenger or whatever. But I, I went on a little rampage. I didn't even, yeah. Anyways, so that's a little bit about that. So Brittany, where do you want me to start? I would say let's start with the treating every day like it's the first or the last day of the month. Okay. Okay. So like I said, I, uh, I work my business like it's my survival mentality. Like I always put my, my business, well, it's one of my top priorities. My family is my number one priority. Um, but like I've told Brittany, I work every day like it's the first day of the month and like it's the last day of the month. And what I mean by that is Despite if I've hit success club, despite if I've hit my number of coaches I wanted to recruit that month or whatever, I work as if my slate is completely clean and I'm hustling like it's the last day, like I haven't hit my goals. And I think when you have that mindset, you stop procrastinating because when you're, when it's the first day of the month, a lot of people push off like, oh, I have until, you know, I have 30 days to hit my goals or I have you know, two weeks, or maybe I, I'm going to hit my goal by the 15th. And so they procrastinate. Who has read the 12 week year? Awesome book. Awesome book. So, you know, like he talks about in the beginning of the book, like a lot of people will put off the hustle until like the very end. But if you start hustling at the beginning and you make the, the goals, the goal length or the time frame shortened, you have that, that hustle mode more often. And I don't say hustle because I want you guys to get overwhelmed or drained because anyone that's ever pushed for elite or star diamond in general, you know, we get that hustle burnout and then you just like kind of, you even get physically sick or you get derailed and you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. But I think leading with love and leading with your passion and your purpose and going out and helping people who have had the same struggles that you've had or that you've overcome, you, you look for those people and you look for them every day. And no matter if you have an hour, five hours a day to work your business, but you always have that mindset. Like it's a fresh start today. Today I'm going to help three people today. I'm going to help five people. I'm going to find five, five women that need to learn how to love themselves more, that need to learn to believe in themselves, to, to live healthier, fulfilling lives. Do you want me to ask you the next question? <laughs> uh, you're, you're looking at me. I'll keep you on course. I'll, don't, okay. don't you worry. So then my next question with that, because if you're treating every day like it's the first and last day, how have you been so successful in converting or excuse me, in um, closing like with coaching, with customers? Talk us through that. So I have a monthly marketing plan that I have team wide and each Monday is a different 
a different thing. So like um, the first Monday of every group or of every month is our free group. So I am an emotional eater. So I stay, stay on um, the clean eating bandwagon. So the first Monday of the month is clean eating. The second Monday of the month is um, a 30 day program oriented challenge group. So 21 day fix, shift shop, whatever. Um, then the third, third week of every Monday is a sneak peek. Actually, um, since March has begun, we've done a sneak peek every week. Um, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. But so third week is a sneak peek of every week or of every month. And then um, the fourth Monday, I actually, I have a personal VIP group and I've had all my coaches in my PS group do this too. It's a VIP group where you don't use, I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm very theme oriented. I'm very fun and flashy and outgoing and all that stuff. So my VIP group gets themes every single day and it's not even just fitness related. So once you graduate from the clean eating group or from the 30 day challenge group or whatever, if you're my PS coach or my PS customer, you get plugged into my VIP group and each day is a different theme. So you're getting to learn about people's lives and you know, there's challenges, how to pay it forward and things like that. So you're kind of like guiding them to become a coach too, but also helping them still stay accountable past their 30 day or 21 day or 80 day, you know, original program because we want to promote lifestyle changes. But, um, Brittany talked about how I close customers and coaches. Um, every day I'm inviting every day. I'm, I, I'm inviting more to the challenge groups because I love diving into my challenge groups for my coaches, because that's when I see my coaches with more success. Oftentimes when I've, when I've signed up a coach and a challenger at the same time, they, they, de they detour off their own journey and focus more on like micromanaging and being a coach, but then they get discouraged because they're not having results to show because they're not focusing on their own journey. Um, so I, I invite every day to a challenge group, every single day I invite to a challenge group. And then I pull my challengers to my sneak peeks. And that's how I'm inviting to my coaching opportunity. But I also on my Instagram stories and my Facebook stories and my Snapchat, anything that you could like be verbally talkative all day long and not annoy people on your actual Instagram page. Um, I talk about coaching and I talk about all my coaches. I talk about like the day in the life of a coach, what I get to do as a coach. And so people are always seeing that and people are always coming to me like, well, how do you do this? And how do you actually earn? And, you know, I keep it questionable. I don't tell too much. I've actually learned that from Shalene Johnson at a summit, you know, like always make sure that you're not telling too much and you're being inquisitive or inquisitive. Is that the right word? Um, you don't have to be an English professor or know your grammar to be a successful beach buddy coach. But, um, so like, I, I get really excited about what I do and I always think about what Beachbody has given me and given the girls that I work with. And I, I think of that before I move into inviting, because I think a lot of people, or I think we all need that. I think we all need to learn. Oh my gosh, my dog is there. I think we all need to remember the good things because if we focus on success club or we focus on getting to diamond or getting our coaches to diamond or moving up rank or whatever, before we go into inviting, it's going to come off as wrong. And that's not what our intentions are. And I know that you don't want to sound it that way, but for whatever reason, people get your vibe, even if they don't know you in real life, even if it's just through text or what have you, but people can feel that. So I think when it's really important, like I get really excited when, you know, one of my coaches said, I was able to put gas in my car this week because of Beachbody, or I was able to get my second paycheck in a row with Beachbody. Like those are the kind of things that really excite me because when I share my income story with new people to Beachbody, they can't relate to that. And they think it's overwhelming or astronomical or something that is completely undoable for them. Um, or un yeah, undoable. Yeah. Anyways, I'm rolling with it. But when I share stories like that, or, you know, my girl was able to <clears throat> um, take her family to Great Wolf Lodge for the weekend with her paycheck from Beachbody, you know, those things are relatable. And so when I talk about, when I'm talking, and I, I'll just bring it up out of nowhere, I'm that, I'm that annoying girl that will talk to you in the grocery store, or, you know, if you have a friend come over and you bring a different friend, I will talk to that person. I bleed Beachbody through and through because it, it excites me. And I think that's, that's something that we all need to do when we're inviting because 
and this is something that's super corny, but I tell my girls all the time, we love shoes. Who loves shoes? Does everybody love shoes? Okay, so say you go to Target, you get a pair of brand new boots, right? They're 40% off. You go out with your girlfriends for a night and they're like, oh my gosh, great, your boots are so cute. And you're like, oh girl, I got them at Target. They were 40% off. They're super comfy. I can wear them with leggings and jeans and a jean skirt and blah, 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 blah. Are you trying to sell them your boots off your feet? No, you're not, but you're so excited about them because they were a great deal. They're super comfortable. You love being able to wear them with multiple things. I think the same thing about Beachbody. So how can you go and br basically brag about a pair of shoes, but then sometimes for whatever reason, once you get that coach label, you can't brag about Beachbody because you feel like you're gonna be seen as a salesperson. So I think it's all about the mindset, it's all about the mentality and keeping that excitement, what's it, what excites you and the things that light your fire before you go into an invite before you go into a conversation, it's a huge game changer. Did I even touch on? Oh, I think you, I think we just need to drop the mic there. The comparison between the two, because it's so stinking true. I love that you went there. Um, no, you're, you're great. I would just, um, tell us more about, because you, you, you stretched my interest when you said that you, obviously you invite every single person. I want you all to remember this to a challenge group. So it, it, for some reason we feel like when you get to five star diamond and above, we're not, you know, the challenge group kind of, it, it's kind of the last resort. And what I've fa have found, you know, those majority of coaches still recruit to that. And then obviously you talk about your sneak peek in there, but do you go in and hand pick who you want your coaches to be as well? Or do you? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm super picky and I've even turned down people because they have a negative mindset or they just, they're, they're too toxic. And it's not like, you know, I, I believe that everyone has good in them, but they have to be at that point where they're willing to work on it. Um, so I don't, I don't invite everybody to be a part of a sneak peek. I don't invite everybody to be a part of my coaching community because we get together multiple times a week. We're a part of Facebook groups and one negative naysayer in there could be super detrimental to your entire team. So I am very picky and I tell all my girls, I can't keep saying girls. I have one guy coach. You guys, it's ridiculous. I have one guy coach. He's going to be diamond with the first month of him being a coach. And it's just, it blows my mind. I'm like, I don't even know what to do with this guy. He's fine with me calling everybody girls still, but you know, whatever. But, um, I tell everybody like be, be, be very picky because don't, I was a coach when I first wanted to go diamond, I was asking everybody and anybody. And I learned the hard way that that's not how I wanted to build my team. And so, you know, I share my mistakes of what I did. Luckily, all those people that weren't meant to be on my team are not on my team anymore. Um, but with my challengers, I do invite everybody that is my avatar. Because I cannot work with a muscle meat head. I cannot work with someone that only has five pounds to lose because I've lost 130 pounds. I know what the struggle is when you're severely overweight and your joints hurt and you're completely exhausted and out of breath. Or if you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's that has anything to do with fatigue, like those are my target audiences. So I invite everybody because I don't care if you have, you know, self-love to gain or weight to lose. I think everybody could benefit from a challenge group everyone benefit from the support alone if not just the nutrition and the fitness but the support alone I think is huge and that's why I also plug everybody into my VIP group because the I don't care if they're doing CrossFit they're people okay I'm gonna be real here when I first started as a coach I heard that you cannot have well I was told that I shouldn't have people in my challenge groups unless they sign up with a challenge pack and I was always like I'm never going to be top 10 because I'll let people in with a free membership and I'll let people in if they just get Shakeology and, you know, just the 21 day fix program or whatever. Um, but I've had people in my VIP group that have been inactive coaches for over two years that started drinking Shakeology again, that lost 40 pounds within the first two months of committing back into the group. I've had people that were CrossFitters that, sit, that swore up and down, Shakeology is bad juju, I won't drink it, started drinking it and got their CrossFit instructor to start drinking it. Like, it's crazy because they're not just hearing from you, they're seeing other people around them that are alongside of them on the same journey as them, doing the same stuff, getting amazing results, feeling good, having more energy, thicker hair, what have you. Um, but yeah, so every day on my social media, I'm inviting. Every day I'm posting about something with 
you know, I'll make one post every day on social media with um, a call to action. Like today I kind of did a little transformation Tuesday about how I used to go to the gym. I hated it. It was struggle to leave my son for hours on end. I had no idea what I was doing. You don't get support at a gym unless you hire a personal trainer. And then I said, I found Beachbody. And no, I said, I found something that worked for me, being able to work out from home, less time and all this stuff. And then at the end, I gave a little call to action. And I think that's huge. Not only am I intentionally sending out personal messages to these people that I'm following every day, to these people that I've already built relationships with, but to other people that follow me that I haven't connected with yet, they're able to see, you know, what I'm offering, what, what is there that they can, or what I have there to help them with. Okay. So I want to ask these ladies that are on, do you have any questions so far? Like, just stop us. Yes, Shannon Galday, I see you raising your hand. Yeah, um, this is awesome. I love all that you're sharing. Um, so what do you do in your VIP group? Can you, uh, like, because you said you have, like, a theme of the day and things like that. Could you give more examples? Absolutely. So I, I love Buffer. That app has saved my life. So every day at 6 p.m., it shows, like, this big hot pink sign and Monday is Motivational Monday, what motivates you. So people often share pictures of their family or a dress they're excited to wear or a vacation they're going on or something, you know, which excites the whole group. Um, Tuesday is Tasty Tuesday. I encourage people to share their favorite Shakeology recipe. If you're not drinking Shakeology, share your, shape, share your favorite recipe of the day. Um, Wednesday is Workout Wednesday. That's the only day I ask for sweaty selfies. Um, Thursday is, um, self-love Thursday. I'm really big on affirmations. So I have everyone share affirmations about themselves. Um, Friday is flex Friday, but we are really big on the self-confidence lately. So everyone's been flexing their smile muscles, which I love. And it wasn't even me that brought that up. It was one of my challengers, Nicole. Um, Saturday is Saturday. So, um, sharing stats from when you very first started your your journey to currently, um, to help them stay on track. And Sunday is non-scale victory Sunday. So something that, you know, is unmeasurable, but just as important. Awesome. Thanks. Um, okay. and also, so do you run your free challenges in that group or do you do your free challenge in a separate group? I do them separately because my free challenges are team wide. So everyone can participate and invite to, but my VIP group is just for me. My coaches are also in there, but as challengers. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else has a question for Vic? Anything? Okay. Don't hesitate to put. Yes, okay, Kelly, go. Thinking, yep. Um, maybe you're going to get to this. So if you are, you can skip my question. But um, Britt mentioned that you... Um, are in the same boat as me without an upline coach. And so I was just wondering um, how you navigate that, how I, on the call last week, I talked about like recognition posts for yourself. Like, you know, how do you do that in a way that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable? And like, how do you kind of, you know, forge new trails when you don't really have like anyone that you're looking up to? Sure. Um, so yes, Kelly, I'm right there with you. So my best friend that I've known since 15 actually signed me up, but, uh, she was not as excited about working at the business as I was. I was put on an inside leg too. So, uh, I had to build my business all by myself and yes, I was butt hurt for a while. And I still have moments where I'm like, I would love recognition. Like it would be fantastic if I got shout outs. But I don't work my business just for that. And um, I do add myself, I do um, my top 10 board for every week for everyone on the team with volume and recruiters. But I also in the team page, like I share that publicly, but on the team page, I do um, pro top producers, which the volume, and then I do top recruiters. And so I will add my name on there, kind of giving like everybody like, hey, I'm in the trenches with you. I'm here getting volume points and recruiting just as much as you are. So I do do that. But I also use that to share to other coaches because I've adopted a lot of coaches down in my downline that their, their personal or their sponsored coaches kind of disappeared or went MIA or stopped sponsoring them. I let them know like, Hey, this business is up to you. And if I can do it, so can you, you don't need someone to hold 
your hand or to guide you as long as you, you know, like look into these groups. Brittany hosts these mastermind groups with other coaches that are vib vibing the same frequency you are that you could team up with or, you know, your success partner, you guys could give each other shout outs and stuff like that. Um, but I think for me personally, because I knew upline uh, personally, I, I needed to work on forgiveness because I was really down in the dumps for a long time. And I would get jealous of people that got recognized, uh, recognized and shout outs and stuff. And it really hurt me for a really long time. But then I realized while I was struggling with my own pain, I wasn't giving to my coaches what they needed. So as soon as I let that go, I recognized my coaches more. And in turn, they started growing and improving and, you know, progressing. So it's a win in that area. That's awesome. Thank you. That was me all of last year. So I'm, at, I'm sitting at the exact same rank I was at this time last year because of the exact same thing you talked about. So that's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for her before we move on to our next little, next little bit? Okay, let's move in. Oh, no. Okay, perfect. So next question for you, Vic. So systems, what have been some amazing systems that you have implemented that you do that have helped you to be successful? Okay, so I'm going to be real with you guys. I am a total like do now plan probably never kind of girl. I very unorganized. So my coaches, I have so many coaches that are very analytical and detail oriented and they've been begging me for years. Will you create systems? We need something that's duplicable. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like just thinking about it hurts my noggin. And so the things that I have created that work for me and I found that also work for a lot of coaches on my team because apparently like attracts like and I attract a lot of people that are really bad at systems too despite a lot of coaches that are my analytical coaches but um I use my notepad in my on my phone like like it's it's my favorite thing because I I do copy and paste a lot when it comes to breaking down what a coach is like if someone we, when we get to that point, I'm not just going to copy and paste to everybody what a coach is, but when we get to that point in the conversation, what, what I do as a coach, I have a little like bullet points of, of what coaching entails or what a challenge group entails. I also have, um, my, uh, package breakdown. So anytime that I'm talking to, um, a person about a challenge group, I always meet the customer where they're at. And I know not everyone's going to want to sign up with a challenge pack. I know not everyone's going to be able to financially afford the all access pass. So what I do is I break down from the basic package of 21 day fix and then our challenge pack. Then I highlight the kickstart. Then I highlight the all access pass. But the more d down I go, I get very detailed oriented. Um, and so anytime that someone says, okay, how much does it cost after, of course, you get to know their goals and their struggles and what they've been doing and all of that stuff, I send them, I'm able to copy and paste something so simple to that conversation where they're able to look at the price pick breakdown and see the value in the challenge pack or the all access pass. Um, and it saves so much time. And I've actually shared that with my team wide, like add these little blurbs in your notepad because how many times do people work from their phones or if their son is sick or their kid is sick like mine is right now and they have to work from a couch and maybe they don't have a laptop or maybe it's charging and you work from your phone or, you know, I don't suggest working when you're out and about because we all know that we don't track when we're in the grocery store or, you know, when you're out watching your kid play sports. But if you're on your phone, it's easy to answer questions that um, are a little bit lengthy and not, you're not able to, um, it's just easier. It saves time. So that is one of my systems I have done. Um, also think if I've been doing our new training on, which is phenomenal. And, um, I also have, so for my leaders, I've, um, made a Google doc of our, I think we've transitioned it to 15 days, um, for the think if but it's a bullet point of different, um, different days, training on different days, so they could create their own Thinkific account so that when their coaches um, go in and complete it, they're getting the notification saying, hey, so-and-so completed this or so-and-so graduated this instead of me getting it all. So we have that. Um, also, like I said, I have the monthly marketing plan 
to where it's on our cover photo so everybody knows what to invite to and when. And that's why at the beginning I said, you know, the third week as our coach sneak peek, we do it for three days because I don't, I think when you come in as a brand new coach, it's very overwhelming to be inviting to a weekly sneak peek all the time. But we have, trans, like I said, we have transitioned to March as uh, our weekly um, sneak peek. It's kind of been working, kind of, kind of been a little bit chaotic. But like I said, I more do now plan later. So I've been planning uh, for what we're doing in April better. Um, but so that way, every week, every day, you have something to invite to, whether it's a clean eating group, whether it's um, a challenge group, a sneak peek, what have you. And we also have, I don't call them scripts because <sighs> to me, scripts are, are often used poorly because people just copy and paste exactly what it says and they don't put their own verbiage in or they don't add their own emojis or exclamation points and it doesn't um, translate well. And then people often feel like they're being sold to. So um, the invitation guide we have that Kim Carver made, oh my gosh, he like changed my life with that thing. Um, but I also have uh, a group or a Google Doc of conversations that I've taken from my leaders that are screenshots of how to overcome this objection or um, how to invite when s someone's struggling with this or what to say in this kind of conversation. We have all that there so people could go in and be like, oh, well, I need help with this. How did this person handle it? Or how did they, you know, what did they say when this came up? Um, those are basically the only systems that's really working on. Um, and it's something that I'm going to try to get better at improving other systems. But that's, that's what's been working. And I'm very, I like to keep things simple because I want to spend more time focusing on the person itself, focusing on my challenge groups, focusing on the people. That's what makes our business. So. Oh, I love that so much. Love that. And I think it's just an eye opener for all of these ladies to realize you don't have to have the perfect systems. You just need right. to know like what you're doing, how to get your coaches to duplicate it. And so I really think, you know, and, and what we notice here, or what I notice is when somebody starts to redo their systems, they stop working their business. It's like all of a sudden it's like, whoop, they just shift completely. And then it's like, once I have the perfect system, then I'll be able to recruit. And it's like, okay, put yourself into action. So I love the fact that you're not super perfectionist. You just do. If there's anything that you can learn from this call, just do right. Regardless. Okay. Of you, like, so my question for you is you, you said you have a sneak peek every single week this week or this mm -hmm. month. What are you doing for April now that you have learned like, okay, that was a little chaotic. So what we've actually did in March, we did. So the first sneak peek was the seventh through the ninth. So we do three days. So it was Wednesday through Friday. The next week it was Monday through Wednesday, then Wednesday through Friday. So we're all just going to start them on Wednesday or on, yeah, we're all going to start them on Wednesday. So you have that space of um, kind of taking a break or, you know, getting new refreshed or uh, getting refreshed before inviting more. But one thing that I did really like about doing this monthly sneak peek is I'm sorry, but I do not like the My Challenge Tracker app. So we do all of our group, all of our groups on Facebook and it's just been one group for the entire month of March. And every, every day before the next coach sneak peek, I hop in and I say, hey guys, just to let you know, we're going to run another coach sneak peek. So this is a great opportunity. Maybe, you know, something came up last week and you were not able to participate, or maybe you did participate and you did sign up. This is a great opportunity for you to invite other people to t check out the coach sneak peek. But by no means do we, we, I want you to feel obligated to stay and to participate again if, you know, beach party coaching is not for you. But so I do that, letting everybody know that's already been involved in the coach sneak peek the week prior or the week prior to that, letting them know what's going on. I have not had one person leave the group, the group yet and everyone's still participating. So it's really awesome. And having different leaders host each week is something that we're going to continue to do. Um, so like I've only hosted twice. Uh, but having other people host and then sharing part of their story. So you get to see more of what the coaching community is instead of just one person. I'm just going to breeze over your comment about the, my challenge tracker app. Let's just move past that one. <laughs> you stinker. You know what it is. Your personality though is so yellow and you need the engagement. You need the fun and the excitement. I know you. I, do. So I get that. I do. Um, so <laughs> Kelly asked a great question. Do you have an assistant that helps you with any of this? I don't. Mm -mm. 
so touch on that. Look at her eyeballs. No, like, so tell us, how do you do that? I mean, first of all, how many hours per day are you committing to your business? Okay. So I work from nine to noon and then I take an hour break and you know, for myself, for lunch, for chilling, um, binge watching, um, married at first sight. And then I work until three o'clock or two 30 when I go pick up my kids. So that's like four and a half hours a day. Okay. So Three, yeah, you're good. You're good. Four and a half, whatever it may be. So question for you, how do you do all this without an assistant? Um, I have focus time. I designate time blocks when I'm doing certain things. Um, I'm very diligent about sticking with my schedule. I don't, you know, I'll be that person that, I mean, I'm, I'm honest. I used to go get my nails done in the middle of the day. I used to go have coffee with my girlfriends whenever I wanted to. I'm like, Oh, my schedule's flexible. I, I said, damn the man, I don't work for the man anymore. I could do whatever I want, but my business wasn't progressing and I was just always working from my phone and that I was not excelling anywhere. Um, so when I sit at my desk, I have to sit at my desk. If I work from the couch, I will not be as focused, but I sit from my desk and I do, I do time blocks of inviting and then checking in with my challenge groups and then training and then training calls and, you know, getting started to write calls and then go back to my messages and then inviting. I think setting time chunks helps you instead of, I used to be that person that worked with numbers. So I need to invite 10. I need to invite 10. And when I wasn't having that need to invite a specific number, my invites would get forced. Like I would, I would have to like scroll and find someone that I, I could invite. And it was, it was messing with my mindset. So when I just have a time block, like I said, I have my bomb timer here that I set when I'm doing my different time chunks of what I'm doing. And so I'll set it for 30 minutes and I'll just, I'll just invite. And then I'll set another 30 minutes and I'll just build relationships. And I think that if you do the things that make your business or do the things that make your business move forward first, you, you really, I mean, I understand people get assistance. You know, I don't like writing up te weekly team emails. I don't, you know, necessarily love making graphics for my recognition for the top producers, you know, but these things I could very well delegate. Yes, you can very well delegate, but also I don't want my coaches thinking they can't be successful unless they hire out either. So I want to do what I expect my coaches to be able to do, if that makes sense. For sure. Um, also Taryn wrote on there and no check-ins or social on social medias or follow-ups before bed. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I also have all my notifications off of every social media platform shut off, even my text messages during my business hours. Boom. Airplane mode. That's another boom. I like that. K to get on social. That's good. Yes, Taryn, we agree with you. I mean, well, and also, I mean, think about what you're dreaming about. Like, if that's the last thing that you're doing is checking on, like, you're never going to have a, you'll always be restless. You'll never have that. But I like the, the time chunks and the de dedicated time to it. It shows right now, is that Gage? Yeah. Oh, it shows right now that um, you can be successful in this business and set a, a very specific timeline on where you're going to work it. So I love that. So 15 Star and doesn't have an assistant. Yep. My coach is in it, almost a 15 star and doesn't have an assistant. Um, yep. Perfect. So where do you, let me ask you these ladies, cause we're going to sum this up in about five minutes. What more, what are more questions that you have for Vicki? Like this is your opportunity to ask. Yes. Shannon go. So, um, yeah, thanks again. This is awesome. Um, so with your sneak peeks, like what's your outline and are you doing them individually together as a team? Like, can you talk more about that? Absolutely. So we do them team wide and each day is two different videos, one AM video, one PM video. And how we set it up is one coach. So there's two coaches that host each sneak peek. Um, one will do the morning videos and one will do the PM videos. Oh my gosh, my son's over here with, okay. Um, oh, will you pick up that rubber band please? So Maxie doesn't get it. Um, so the first day is we talk about what exactly coaches do and all, okay, go take a shower. Um, all the videos are like three to five minutes and we do them live because more people are engaged with live videos than pre-recorded videos. Um, so the first day we do, uh, what, what is that exactly that coaches do? And then the second video that day is how do coaches earn money? You want to break them down, break down the basics. Second day is we talk about goals and goal setting 
and how it's important to know what you're working towards. The second video of the second day <clears throat> is we talk about dreaming big and, and we um, really focus on instilling the vision in them and our mission statement as a team. Um, and then we, you know, every, every video we have a different assignment. So like with the vision one, we have them share their dreams and um, I, I let them know, like, do not limit yourself. Like the second you start writing your dream and you're like, Oh, I can't do that. Or that's scary. Like get that out of your mindset because you really want them to be dreaming big. You want them to be like thinking, you know, what's really possible for me. Um, the third day is, um, what's the first video in the morning? Hold on. I'm going to share. I'm going to tell you in just a second. The, the second video of the third day is how they sign up. So you break down the coach sign up fee or the coach um, sign ups, and then oh my gosh, where's my doc? I never do the morning videos. This is horrible. I always have my East Coasters do them. Okay, hold on. I'm getting my doc section. The third. I'm sorry, guys. Oh my gosh, I can't find it. You're fine. Take your time. No pressure. I'm going to my sneak peek right now. Thanks for looking for him. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm sorry. I'm not. See, this is, I'm being honest. I'm not very good at systems. No, oh, it sounds like you have a lot of good things going. Well, we, we do have good, I mean, we do have good simple systems. But that's important, um, making it simple. Yeah, yeah. Because like Brittany said, too many times people will come in and try to recreate the will or, you know, like I've had coaches that needed to do something with tracking. And so they bounced from act to streak to team Z back to pen and paper. And instead of really just sticking with one, they bounce all over the place and you know, you're not, you're not getting much out of that by doing all that instead of just nailing down one main point or one main tracking system. Okay, so, oh, the, fir the third is how coaches get paid. So the second one, or the first one is, oh, okay, here. So it's why you wanna be a coach. And then what coaches actually do. And then the goals, the dreams how coaches get paid, and then how you can sign up. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. We have time for about one more question. Anybody? Did you get some good golden nuggets out of this? I think the, the overall vision with this is just know that you don't need to be perfect. You don't need all these perfect systems. Literally what it took you, and I say this time and time again, what it took you to become a three and a four star diamond will help you to become a five star diamond plus. You all have big goals. Vicki, you shared a big goal that you're working towards. And so I, I think just reiterating, let's talk about one more just a second. Like, it is the first, it's, you know, it's either the first or the last day of the month. And I love that you said it takes away from the procrastinating because, and this is the thing, if you read enough in like high performance habits, you know, procrastination is just because you are not enthusiastic about what you're working on. You are enthusiastic in what you do. And if you, if you didn't, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be a coach. You won't be as far as you are within this business. So is there anything else big that you want to just reiterate with that? Cause I love that. No, I really think like if you guys could take one thing away, just make sure that you're excited and you always think about what excites you about this business because whether you're talking to social media in a live video, talking to your coaches on your team, they're all going to feel that and people want to join something that's exciting. And you know, you, people, there's so many times where I see coaches come into this business and they have these big dreams and these big aspirations but life happens and they let it derail them and they put Beachbody on the back burner, which is actually the complete opposite because Beachbody can literally help everybody in every area of their life if they allow it. And so by, by coming on and being vulnerable on social media and being like, you know what, I'm struggling with this or this happened, but this is how I'm going to overcome it. Or this is how I let, um, 
I let my, my faith be bigger than my fear. And I think if you just keep that excitement and why you signed up as a beach body coach and, and what it is that you actually want to do with this in the forefront, you can, you can never go wrong because you're always going to be excited. It's going to, that, that energy is going to be contagious to not only your coaches and your customers, but to your prospects too. And people are going to want to be a part of that because let's face it in an average normal life, a lot of people are content and they've settled and they don't like their job or they have no support or they're in a dead end relationship or dead end career or they're just not going anywhere. And so people need something. Love that. Thank you so much. And you did a jiggle. You're welcome. Um, amazing. Any last calls before we let it go? Thank you so much. Really, 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 you brought so much content. I have two pages of notes. So I can only imagine how much they took. Um, but thank you for your time. And thank you, ladies, for showing up. I hope you all have an amazing day. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Bye, all. Bye, Brett.